<laughs> Mine doesn't want to rotate. <laughs> All right, my phone's failing me. The rotation's not working. So speaking of rotation, uh, welcome to Forty Fifu, and Oscar will be taking you through a daily um, joint mobility routine. We've been talking a lot about joint mobility, um, and I'm just gonna actually sit this one out. So, oh, I'm not on his camera. Sorry, we are dual casting again. <laughs> anyway, uh, take it away, Oscar. All right. So what we're gonna do is um, a daily joint mobility routine. I've been talking a lot about getting your joints moving through their full range of motion um, on a multiple of these 40 foot food podcasts. So a um, couple concepts first, right? Is the reason you want to take your joints through their full range of motion every single day is not because every single day you'll be kind of putting your neck in this position, but that you want to be able to at least explore those positions. Because if you don't, your body is going to just get rid of the opportunity, the option of using it. It's going to say, well, Oscar doesn't need to go into this position. We never, don't even worry about it. Forget about how to learn. Forget about that position of learning how to get there. And then one day you will get there and that's how injuries happen. So uh, this is going to be, think of this as a daily joint mobility routine. It shouldn't be too intense. Um, another concept to think about is irradiation or tension. Um, so irradiation is using more muscles, recruiting more muscles to create more tension throughout the body and also make you stronger. Um, tension, you can look at it as a percentage from zero to 100%. 100% tension is squeezing really hard. Um, what we wanna do this is anywhere between the 10 to 30% range. So we're gonna start every joint from the head down. We'll see how much we get through in the next 15 minutes. I'm gonna try to explain each movement for you. Um, and then I'm gonna give you three options. I'm sitting, I'll show you from the sides. I'm sitting on my toes, like so, or I'm sitting on my heels, like so, because I think it's important to be able to spend time there in a position which we, can, we call rest posture, um, which I'll go into more detail in the future. But your other options are, you can either sit on your toes, sit on your heels, you can go into a tall kneeling position, or you can do these from standing. So I am choosing to do it from my sitting position here. Uh, I'm gonna start in a heel sit, so my toes are pointed back and I'm sitting in my heels. So first thing is uh, we want to think of moving the joints independently. Each joint should move on its own before we can move them together. So I want you to take a big exhale. Ribs come down. And then I'm going to inhale, brace kind of my abdomen and create a little bit of tension there. Okay. Then your chin, think of it as the tip of a highlighter. And you're going to draw as big of a circle as you can. First, I'm going to draw my chin back, so I'm double chinning. And I'm going to bring my chin down towards my chest and start circling around. So I'm bringing my chin over my collarbone, over the shoulder, and then back and up toward the ceiling, all the way around. Taking your cervical spine through its full range of motion. That's one direction. We're going to go in the opposite direction. So bringing your chin back, down, and then circling all the way around. We call this a daily routine because the first thing you should do when you wake up is take each of your joints through their full range of motion because what that'll do is remind your body that it's able to do that and it'll, it, you'll be able to maintain what you have. You might have some comments there. Um, so the, um, that's your neck. And then as far as tension goes, I did about 10 to 20%. If you were to do this as part of a warm up before working out, you could increase that to maybe 50, 60%. This is what it would look like half, half of a circle, is a little bit more tension, almost as if the air were 50% thicker and I'm fighting to get around it, okay? But for the purpose of this, let's do, or on your own, you wanna do about three rotations each side. So that's your cervical spine. The next thing we're going to do is our thoracic spine, which is our mid-back. So for this, you're going to cross your arms like a vampire. And um, I'm going to turn to the side so you can see what happens. And also sit on my toes to kind of mix up my stretching. So from here, crossing my arms, 
I don't want to move from my low back, from my lumbar. I want to move from my, move from my mid back. So I'm flexing forward without rounding my low back. Then I'm turning to the right, almost like if my spine were a towel, I'm wringing out that towel. Then I'm gonna laterally bend to the side, extend my back from my mid to upper back. Laterally bend, turn, and come back down. That's one direction, okay? I'm gonna show you on the other side, facing you guys, so you can see the difference now. So from here again, don't wanna use my cervical, don't wanna use my lumbar, so just the mid to upper back. Flexing forward, turning, laterally bending, extending back, laterally bending, turn, and back down. That's one rotation each direction. Again, three to five reps, um, but at least three because by that third rep, you'll really kind of start giving good input into your body and your brain is going to start thinking we need to make some changes. Is that a raised hand that I see? <laughs> Question. Yes. Um, is there any kind of specific breathing you're supposed to do while you do all those rotations um, or do you just keep it neutral and natural? I think you should just keep your breathing natural at the, for our morning, think of it, our morning routine, which is 10 to 10 to 30% of your maximal contraction. So you should be able to do that by breathing naturally. I will say that it, as you increase it, 50 to 60%, 80%, 90% of your maximum contraction, you're going to have to do a little bit more pressurized breathing in order to maintain that tension. And should you wear fangs and a cape? Yes, you should wear fangs and a, a cape, especially if um, you uh, start hissing. If you're just going to just have your arms cross and go through a circle, fangs and cape is not necessary. <laughs> But if you're going to flex forward and be doing like that hissing sound, I think it's important to just go all out and wear a fang and a cape. Yeah. Okay, thank Any you. Any more questions? That's all for now. That's all for now. Excellent. Very good questions. So we did our cervical spine. We did our thoracic spine. We're going to now do globally our entire spine flexing and extending. So from here, you go into your hands and your knees. You'll notice that my wrists are right under my shoulders, my knees are right under my hips, and I'm gonna go into ex uh, flexion first. Try to do a good demonstration here. We wanna move one vertebrae at a time. So I'm gonna start extending from my tailbone. And then my lower back, almost as if I'm trying to get my belly button to spill into the floor. And my chest to spill down towards the floor. And finally going into cervical extension, my neck extending. Now I'm gonna reverse it by flexing from the neck. So I tuck my chin, start rounding my upper back, one vertebrae at a time, mid back, working my way down, and tucking the tail under. Okay, I'm gonna do one more routine of this. And I'm going to just tell you a couple things that I started doing with um, my arms to help maintain um, the focus just on my spine and not on anything else. So when we go into flexion, which is like cat, right? You want to push the ground away from you. When you go into extension, which is like cow or camel, some people call it, you want to imagine that you're dragging your hands towards your knees. So I'm going to go into flexion again. I'm pushing the ground away. Now one vertebrae at a time, I'm going to start going into extension. Starting from my tailbone. Tailbone's going up. I'm extending my low back. Now I'm going to start imagining I'm dragging my hands towards my knees and my knees towards my hands. And that maintains my shoulder blades down as I go into extension. Upper back and neck. So I'm pulling heel of my hand towards my knees. Now when I reverse it, halfway through I really start pushing. So I'm flexing at the cervical, at, the, at your neck, upper back, mid back, I'm starting to push the ground away now. Really push the ground away, tucking my tail under finally at the end. Okay? So again, you probably want to get three rounds, three to five rounds each. We're going really slow, but once you get the hang of it and know the routine, 
you can get your whole body done in about 10 minutes or less. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is our shoulder blade. So again, I think it's important to kind of show this from the side. Um, I'll do one arm at a time. So my elbow is straight, shoulders are down. I'm gonna bring my shoulder blade up towards my ear. So we call this elevation of the scapula, right? Then I'm gonna go back, then down, and then forward. Just moving my shoulder blade and then trying to connect that into a nice circle. What we don't want, I'm gonna reverse it, what we don't want is bending the elbows, moving the rest of the body. We're just trying to isolate the shoulder blade. So I'm gonna depress, retract, elevate, protract. So I go down, back, up, forward. Okay, and that's a couple of circles each side. I'll show you from the front what it looks like on my other arm. And remember, I'm still sticking to my toe sit, heel sit. You guys can stand up at any time, go into a tall kneeling position, go into a half kneel position. Um, I'm just trying to kill two birds with one stone here. So, shoulders up, back, down, forward. Trying to only move my shoulder blade. The smoother you can make that circle, the more control you're gonna have. So, recap, we've done our cervical spine, we've done our thoracic, we've done our, our full spine, so we've done the full spine, and we've done shoulder blades. We're gonna stick now with um, the shoulder itself, and in order again to kill two birds with one stone, I like to do a half kneel position, so I can get a little bit of a lock here, stretch this down leg, while I'm focusing on my shoulder. Two ways to do this, you can either spread your fingers, nice and tight, or you can make a nice tight fist, Alternatively, you can grab something like a tennis ball. Remember that concept of irradiation. If you squeeze something, you're gonna be able to recruit more muscles to keep that tense. So for right now, I'm gonna demonstrate this with my fingers splayed, nice elbow straight, arm straight. Right arm, I'm using my right arm. I'm bringing my arm up, shoulder flexion. So I'm trying to get my bicep lined up with my ear. Once I can't go any further, I'm gonna freeze. And I'm gonna start internally rotating. So I'm actually gonna have to go down so you can see my hands. There you go. So from here, we're gonna turn in. Since it's my right hand, I'm basically, it's like I'm screwing in a light bulb. I'm going counterclockwise. Once I can't turn anymore, then I start going back and circling around. You'll notice I have my hand on my ribs and the reason is I don't want to twist anywhere. I want to keep this line straight. So at the bottom, I'm internally rotated as much as I can. I'm going to go into extension as far back as I can. Hit a roadblock where I can't go any further. And that's when I start externally rotating, circling all the way around. That's one rotation each direction with my right arm. I'm going to demonstrate it with the left. Um, and I want you to just think about trying to make as big of a circle as you can under control. So if you imagine there was a wall here, I'm trying to paint that wall with my hand, like if my hand was the paintbrush and draw as big of a circle as I can. So I'm bringing my arm up. Once I hit my roadblock, I can't go any further. I'm going to externally rotate. I'm turning out. This is a clockwise with my left hand. Turning out. I can't turn out anymore. I start circling around all the way around and then back down and again I'll show you from the side as I go in the opposite direction so I'm internally rotated I'm going to go back as far as I can hands on my ribs so I'm not twisting shoulder blade still down even though I'm going into full shoulder extension here and then I'm going to rotate circle all the way around okay so that was one full circle each direction with each arm, we're gonna do our elbow next. For the elbow, I like to use your finger, place it right on the elbow, and what we wanna get is rotation of the elbow first. So your forearm should rotate out. I'm making a tight fist, and I'm rotating out as much as I can. Once I can't go out any further, I'm going down. I'm still rotating out even as I go down, and I'm only focusing on that. Once I can't, once I hit my bottom, I'm gonna turn all the way in as much as I can, 
and come up. And then we reverse it. So I'm going to turn in as much as I can at the top. Keep turning in. And down. And then I turn out as much as I can. What you start learning as you do this is this becomes a nice assessment tool. Because if you do, you take your joints to their full range of motion, you'll notice like, oh, my left elbow is lacking some external rotation today. I don't know why. Could have been something that you're doing. So at the top here, I'm going to turn out as much as I can. Remember also pain-free range of motion. So if this were to hurt, I would just stop a little bit earlier and then keep going down, right? If I turn in and this hurts, I would turn in right before it hurts and then come up. So both directions, both elbows, slow and controlled. I'm at about, again, 30% controlled contraction. Um, last thing we're going to do, and uh, maybe I can get a little closer so you can see, okay, is your wrist. So you see we have a hand sticking out there. Um, two ways to do your wrist is you can have your arms, fingers straight, which I think is a little bit more challenging because you have a tendency when we do wrist circles to start curling the finger. Is that a... Chop, yeah, chop. Um, so I'm gonna ask you guys to do it from a fist. So if you have your fist, let's see if we can show you from this side here. Um, you want you, this part of your forearm facing straight up. Um, if I wasn't using my phone right now for uh, Facebook Live, I would demonstrate by placing my phone on my, on my forearm. But instead I'm gonna hold onto my forearm so it doesn't rotate. The rotation just comes from my wrist. So I'm going to flex my wrist as much as I can and then start drawing as big of a circle as I can, pain-free, as if my knuckles were drawing a big circle. And what you'll notice is if you try to do this, is your forearm is gonna to wanna to turn, right? So I flex and then go out, draw that big circle. I'm gonna demonstrate with my hand open on the left arm because you'll see what the challenges are. <laughs> there goes a finger. As uh, you flex, you circle. I'm trying to keep my fingers and my palm flat. So this would be bad. And that is bad, right? What you don't want is this curling motion. So I'm flexing and circling around. Okay, this is really important for all of us who are on our phones a lot to get full motion of the wrist. So pretty much what we did there is all upper body, kind of at the 15 minute mark, but um, we could probably finish up with hips, knees, and ankles. So let, let's just keep going. Um, what do you think? No? Yes? Yeah. Thoughts? I think we should give them. All right. So you know what? Let me just finish it up with this way. We'll come back next week. I'll do the lower body. But for now, try to do that upper body routine. Get your neck, get your spine, get your shoulder blades, your shoulder, your elbows, and your wrists. Do that throughout um, as often as you can. But if you do it at least once a day, the reason we want you to do this, right, is because at some point, maybe you'll have to reach back and get something. And if you've never taken your shoulder through its full range of motion, especially if you do Kung Fu, there are going to be positions that demand movements that demand your full range of motion of your shoulder, you know, of your wrist, right? When you're doing kicks, um, your elbows have to be able to rotate and handle torsion and torque when you're flowering and using your weapons. So this is a good way to start practicing that. Um, and if you don't do it, just remember that your body is going to say, all right, Cool, you don't need it, we're not gonna, we're gonna forget how to, how to do it. Um, so we will work on hips, knees, ankles, toes next week. Um, in the meantime, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'm gonna sneak up closer to my phone because I see someone's asking something. Eamon says hi. Oh, very nice. Hi, oh, look, we're Eamon in says the hi. Studio. Yeah, tell Eamon I said hi. And um, Jackie Hop says hi. And Jackie Hop says hi. Yeah. So um, last week, this past weekend, we did a mobility seminar here, and I went to a lot more details on the whys of how we do it, so I'm gonna kind of spread that information out over the next few weeks. Uh, we did our upper body routine here. We will do our lower body routine moving forward, and then at some point, I'll just record it all as one thing, so as a follow along video. This is just to give you kind of an introduction for it. If you guys have any questions, you can hit me up on the Facebook. Any questions on your end or anything we need to add on? Um, people are really excited for next week. Really? Yeah. Who, who is excited? <laughs> uh, Jackie Hop's excited for next okay. week. <laughs> so, but one question is um, just specifically, 
why is it so important as we get older as well? Because, you know, the youngsters, they're able to kind of just jump into everything. I know we probably talked about it on previous podcasts. Yeah, but so let's talk about this. Um, we are born into this world infinitely mobile. Take a newborn baby, you can put their limbs all over the place, right? Um, and they kind of have to earn their stability. So what would be the ideal mobility is what a newborn has as far as like being able to get into different range of motion. They just don't have control over it, right? Over time, we start losing it. Just repeating again, whatever we don't use, we lose. Um, the reason, use it or lose it. Use it or lose it. <laughs> the reason this is important, right? Um, as a baseline starting point when we're doing our foam rolling routine, no, sorry, not foam rolling, our joint mobility routine, the reason this is important is because this is a great way to just assess where you're at now. What I just did is not gonna improve my mobility. It's not gonna improve your mobility. It's gonna keep you where you're at because we are constantly fighting this <laughs> never-ending battle against gravity. Damn you, gravity! Um, and age and, and our sedentary lifestyle. So the good news is you can change the type of person that you are right now if you have a long-term perspective. If you think, hey, do I wanna be alive in 10 more years? If the answer is yes, then every cell in your body can be completely different and change in the next 10 years if you start putting the force and the input that you want to it and start directing your body in where you want it to go. The bad news is, or the challenging news, is that it's not easy. That joint mobility routine that we just did, what it'll mainly do is maintain what you have, is a maintenance routine. If we wanna expand our mobility and expand our control, then this is a starting point because you gather information and then you use that information to then focus on what you want to focus on, which is like, wow, I tried to do my shoulder and my right shoulder is not working as well as my left. Let me do some more work on my right shoulder and then we have options for that and we can answer that as well. But um, um, before you guys start asking, asking questions like, hey, so what, if, what do I do about the, um, if my elbow hurts? Try to do the joint mobility routine for your shoulder, for your elbow, for your shoulder, for your, you know, try to go through that. Assess and then we can answer questions from there. Um, but next week we'll go through the hips, we'll go through the knees, ankles, toes, butts up. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes? Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks for joining us on 45th Boog. All right, cool. All right, well, listen, you guys have a great night. Stay mobile. Stay mobile. We'll check you guys out then.